Banshee of the Badlands. Hell with the fires out is what the Badlands of Dakota have been called. The fearless western nomenclature fits the place. It is an ancient sea bottom with its clay strata worn by frost and flood into forms like pagodas, pyramids, and terraced cities. Labyrinthine canyons wind among these fantastic peaks, which are brilliant in color, but bleak, savage, and oppressive. Game courses over the castellated hills, rattlesnakes bask at the edge of the crater above burning coal seams, and wild men have made despairing stand here against advancing civilization. It may have been the white victim of a red man's jealousy that haunts the region of the butte called Watchdog, or it may have been an Indian woman who was killed there. But there is a banshee in the desert whose cries have chilled the blood that would not have cooled at the sight of a bear or panther. By moonlight, when the scenery is most suggestive and unearthly, and the noises of wolves and owls inspire uneasy feelings, the ghost is seen on a hill a mile south of the watchdog, her hair blowing, her arms tossing in strange gestures. If war parties, emigrants, cowboys, hunters, any who for good or ill are going through this country, past the haunted butte at night. The rocks are lighted with phosphor flashes, and the banshee sweeps upon them, as if wishing to speak, or as if waiting a question that it has occurred to none to ask. She stands beside them in an attitude of appeal, but if asked what she wants, she flings her arms aloft, and with a shriek that echoes through the blasted gulches for a mile, she disappears and an instant later is seen wringing her hands on her hilltop. Cattle will not graze near the haunted butte, and the cowboys keep aloof from it, for the word has never been spoken that will solve the mystery of the region or quiet the unhappy banshee. The creature has a companion sometimes, and the unfleshed skeleton that trudges about the ash and clay and haunts the camps in search of music. If he hears it, he will sit outside the door and nod in time to it, while a violin, left within his reach, is eagerly seized and will be played on 